Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Super Car Guy channel. In today's quick video, we're taking a look at this Autofix OM129 OBD2 code reader. It claims that it can read uh, multitudes of different codes. It's great for DIY users and auto repair stores. It can also give you descriptions of the issue, which is nice if it actually does that. And it claims to be able to do battery checks, IM readiness, some DTC help. I assume it's just the descriptions for the codes review not exactly sure what that is but we'll take a look uh, and it comes in you know different uh, languages that you can switch through the menu now if we take the actual scanner out of the box it is really really nicely constructed so i really like that it has this rugged rubber around it and it feels nice and solid in your hand and doesn't feel like a cheap product which is nice um, also comes of course with a manual the manual is decently written, so, you know, if you usually rely on manuals to kind of figure out how to use a product and all that, uh, it's decent enough. I wouldn't say it's like perfect English, but you can see what message they're trying to convey uh, when you're trying to learn how to use a certain function on, uh, on this code reader. It also comes with a, a USB cable, so you can definitely upgrade these, which is really, really nice. That's a big pro for these scanners you can get the newer software when it comes out as well as uh newer cars um you know if there's any updates for a newer car or a new car comes out and you want to use this you know a couple years down the road uh, so that's a big positive for this scanner in my eyes now i'm gonna plug it in and see how long it actually takes to turn on let's take a look I'm gonna plug it in all right so as you saw, it only took about a second to turn on, which is really nice. Um, one, one thing that I really like about the scanner is the display. As you can see, it's full color, big menu, uh, menu buttons, big icons. So there isn't, you know, you don't have to squint or anything like that just to see it. Uh, the negative thing about the screen is that there is a lot of reflection. As you can see, it reflects pretty much everything, especially if you're in the sun. Now, here at the main menu, you have a few different options you have your standard obd2 you have your im readiness and you have the battery check uh, as well as the lookup so you can look up the codes that you have scanned on you know on the car and you can also review them uh, let's go into the setup first and see what kind of options we have in there of course we can change the language you have a few different languages in here so that's nice not like only one or two like i've seen on some other ones you have your units of measurement, so you can check between metric and, you know, English. Beeps, I turned those off, they're very annoying. Uh, you can record, so you can record onto the device, so your, your codes, and then actually open them on the computer, which is uh, kind of nice. You can change your background. And, you know, a lot of these don't really matter, I guess, as well as you can look up the version um, that you have, so software and hardware. All right, now that we're out of the setup, let's take a look at the other options. Uh, I'll start with the IM readiness. So we're going to scan that. And as you can see, it scans your car. And it shows you exactly if your car is ready or not. So as you can see, I haven't been driving this car a lot. So the EVAP and O2 sensor and EGR and the catalytic converter aren't ready to pass the test. So this is something, you know, that's good to know before you drive whatever amount of miles to the emission test. And, you know, you get in there and you can't, you don't pass because the car isn't ready. So in this case, you'd probably want to drive the car for 20, 30 minutes while everything heats up and gets warm. And then you can go to the emission testing place and actually pass the test. Or you can scan and see if you have. Uh, one thing to know that I've learned recently is that if you clear your codes, you will not pass. It will still show up as, you know, nothing's ready to pass. So don't clear your codes before you go to one of those places. So the next item is the battery test. Let's go in and see what it actually does. It shows you your current voltage, but what you can also do is see how your battery behaves uh, when you start the car. So I'm gonna click on start detection and then put the car in neutral, that's important. And then start the car. So as you can see, it shows you what the car started off, how much, uh, you know, it was used uh, It was used to start the car and where it bounced off and now it's charging. 
so it's pretty useful to see how low your battery goes when you start the car and etc. Now let's take a look at the most important part of the scanner, which is of course the OBD2 part. So I'm going to hit enter. Let's see how long it takes to scan the system. And as you can see, it goes very quickly and it shows you the same information as far as the IM readiness for your car. I'm going to hit enter. And here we have a few different options. We can read the codes. Once again, it goes very quick. This card doesn't have any code, so there's not much to show, unfortunately. You can also erase the code, so you can go in here, click yes, and it's gonna, you know, give you some instructions, gonna erase uh, your codes. You can go into the I am writing this, so it's slightly different looking page, and you also have options, whether it's for this driving cycle or since the car has had the codes cleared, so I'm gonna hit enter. Same thing, it shows you the same information, just kind of graphed slightly different. Now we're gonna go to data stream and see what's in here. And this is basically your live data. Uh, normally it says live data on most other scanners. This one says data stream, but it's the same thing. Uh, the cool thing here is that you can view all the PIDs. So you can see everything that the car reports, you know, all of the sensors and stuff. So you can have your fuel system status, short-term fuel trims and all that stuff, which is really good. RPM, vehicle speed. I mean, there's a lot of them in here, right? Uh, but the cool part here is that you can actually select those items instead of just, you know, having 40, 50 different PIDs, which are difficult to kind of scroll through. You can go in here and say, okay, I need to see the engine coolant temp as well as the long-term fuel trim and the engine RPM, something like that. Then you hit exit and it shows you just those specific PIDs instead of, you know, everything else. Now you can also go back and you can go to the view graphic items, which is um, the same thing where you can select uh, the specific data streams that allow you to show um, actual graphs. Uh, so we can go to, we can select long-term and engine coolant. I'm not sure what else is gonna show in here since I don't have the car on, but it will graph, you know, that whatever you picked, whatever PIDs you have selected on, on here which is really cool not a lot of the you know cheaper scanners will allow you to do this uh you know it, you, it's a lot easier to visualize once you see all the measurements go up and down now let's go back uh we can also freeze frame data but you know this card does not uh, support that at this moment you also have your o02 sensor test so we can go in here and test either bank one or bank two let's say click yes and you can see it passes I mean, the car's off, so, you know, you probably have to run the car to actually have an accurate reading, but you do have that option in here. Uh, you also have onboard monitoring. So if you go in here, this is kind of what differentiates this scanner from the $20, $30 ones. In here, you can do your catalytic uh, converter monitoring. So you can go in here and you can look at the, uh, you know, all the values. Let's go back. You can also do the VVT monitoring bank. You can do EVAP monitoring uh misfire uh, sensing so you can check if there has been any misfires on you know any of the cylinders so as you can see this one hasn't had any but you know you can definitely get that data which is uh important when you're trying to troubleshoot uh, a car that has you know some kind of strange code that doesn't describe exactly what it, you know what it is all right let's go back you can also test components although i found that most cars don't have anything that's supported in here so i'm not really sure you know which cars actually support this and you can get your vehicle information that's going to show you VIN number and a few other things so I'm not gonna go in there but that's pretty much it for this scanner um, just a couple other things I wanted to mention you can go in here into the lookup and you can actually just look up any code that you know you have instead of you don't have to go on the internet just in case you're somewhere remote hit enter and it tells you what it is uh, you can Obviously, obviously, I don't know what this one is exactly, but it will give you a decent description so at least you know what to look for. Uh, you can also go to review, which uh, basically saves the codes that has been that have been scanned on your car. So if the car has had any codes scanned on it, you can go in here and see those uh, DTCs in here. This car hasn't had any code, so you're not going to see anything here. Obviously, you can delete that data as well. So in conclusion, I think this is a very nicely constructed scanner with a great color screen, uh, nice hardware, good buttons, easy to press. Uh, they're not tiny or anything like that. Um, but would I recommend this to, you know, an enthusiast that has uh, BMWs or Mercedes or kind of, you know, German cars? Probably not. I would get something that reads uh, those, you know, car specific codes. 
This is, however, a great, great uh, generic code reader with a few extra uh, options that, you know, most $20, $30 ones don't have. Uh, I would recommend this for anybody that has maybe, you know, Japanese cars or American cars where you need to just confirm certain issues on the car or, you know, scan it before you take it to a mechanic, things like that. A couple things that I don't like about it is that it's a little expensive at like $64, but they often have discounts, uh, you know, at the moment it's like 18 or 20% off, so that's pretty nice. It has many features, uh, you know, that the less expensive scanners, the $20, $30 ones don't have, but it can't read BMW or Fiat or whatever specific codes. Uh, also can't go into the modules and see live data from an individual sensor like a lot of the more expensive ones can but you know at that time you're paying at least double than what this one costs so that makes sense so thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it if you'd like to purchase one of these you'll find the link in the description if you like the video hit that like button don't forget to comment give me your opinion on this scanner and whether it's worth the 64 dollars plus the 18 dollar discount uh, also, subscribe for more car videos, um, scanner reviews, anything and everything car related. And I'll see you guys in the next one.